Bye. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. Ah. Okay. So I haven't even opened the fucking game yet. It's so cute. It says Kitty on it. I love it so much. Uh, yes, Kitty. Uh, got my fucking. I have like. What's it called? Like a mullet? Like, really, like a mullet moment? Like, it's so long, I can literally put it like into a hair tie at this point. Anyway. I'm not the biggest fan of my mullet, but. None of the runs and. Objection! Hello! Thank you for joining. Uh, I guess with that, let's just fucking just get right into it because fuck, I ca I can't wait. I'm like so excited for this myself. <laughs> like nothing wrong with bullets. I just like don't want it right now, I, or I'm tired of it. Anyways, middle part two, which is not a long part, but like the last part is apparently really long. <laughs> So yeah, last time we found out that, that the uh, president of uh, Zhang, what, what's what's the name of the country? <laughs> Zhengpa, that's the name. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, huh? uh, is actually the father of John Marsh. Oh my god, you're not fucking ready for this. We also got this uh drawing that was in Zheng Fa. John is twelve. This happened no John is thirteen. This happened twelve years ago. <laughs> I don't think it could be John, unless he is very talented. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's get into it. John. So that guy was my dad. He found out about his own birth so suddenly. And furthermore, his newfound father is no longer in this world. I'd always been searching for my dad. John. Get it, alright? He's the president. I know it's a complicated situation. But we even met face to face during the filming. So then why? Huh? Why didn't he tell me who he really was? I'm sorry, John. M Mom, you don't need to apologize, no matter how you look at it. It's all my fault. Yesterday, I broke my promise with you and didn't even notice the fire on the roof. So I destroyed everything. I crushed it all. My dad. And those flowers that my mom carefully grew. John. Please. For now. Just don't think about anything. Just stay like this for a little while. Just for a little while. Okay? The bond between a parent and child. Is the meaning behind lion lilies. I know it's not my style, but that flower is from Zheng Fa. However, we have no means of protecting that bond. Courtney's so good. <laughs> Me at the beginning of the game. Oh my god, Courtney, shut the fuck up. Nobody likes you right now. Courtney, I love you. <laughs> Agent Lang, allow me to say this. The case won't be solved by sentimentality alone. Therefore, shouldn't we do all that we can can to solve it? Yeah, you're right. The recreation of the past is finished. Your father's deduction is correct. My old man took his deductions to the grave. He never told anyone about them. So 
who knows if they were right or not. In that case, what about your own deductions? I would like to hear what you think happened based on the recreation. In order for us to get closer to the truth of 12 years ago. Yeah, I was thinking it's about time. I can see it now. The old man's back. Real close. I'll catch up to him for sure. Why do everyone have that issue? <laughs> Through the truth that my old man recovered, uncovered. <laughs> there is no mistake that the president went to the orphanage. The stuffed toy is proof of that. He was planning to meet with Amy Marsh. However, the president was kidnapped, and Cameron just happened to witness it. <laughs> it's really that you just a gay. <laughs> For real, though. It just gets worse too, like literally everyone has that issue. <laughs> oh, there's like. Oh, that's where it is. It's going around the charger. The charger that I don't have connected to anything at the moment. Hold up. I was supposed to connect it to my phone. Cameron just happened to witness it, yeah. Cameron hadn't been there. It probably would have been. It would have just been a kidnapping with no murder. Afterwards, the body was moved to the flower beds and the fake photo was taken. Was that really- was that what really happened 12 years ago? However, there's one thing I still don't get. Something you don't get. It's this. Why did they need to take a fake photo? Why would they go through all that trouble and even make the president take part in the photo? That's true. However, the answer to that riddle must lie somewhere within. Once we get past the layers upon layers of deductions, we shall surely reach it. Yeah, that's right. I'd like to hear your deductions as well. Alright, poor statement, let's go. If Cameron, there we go. And then the mysterious bloodstain. The eyewitness, Cameron, had not been there. No murder would have taken place. Is that really the case? The criminal's goal was only to kidnap the president. If there were no witnesses. There would have been no need to commit murder, right? And what if Cameron wasn't the only one who was murdered? There was a large bloodstain near the flower beds. However, Cameron was murdered. Near the snowman, ergo, this bloodstain could not have belonged to Cameron. Someone else's blood was spilt, and quite a vast amount of that. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, do you have any idea what you're saying? I do. It's hard to believe, however. That is what the evidence indicates. Huh, <sighs> on that night, 12 years ago, there were two murders. Surprise them with you with mommy issues. <laughs> True. <laughs> like I said, all of them have daddy issues. <laughs> You're saying that the other murder was covered up. Who? Just who the heck could have been killed? A murder that was cleverly concealed. All traces of it were erased. And the incident itself was completely deleted from the case files. However, there's one thing. One piece of evidence that still remained intact after 12 years. This piece of evidence shows that something happened that night. Drawing. The other murder incident was buried in the dark by Blaze the Best. However, there is still one piece of evidence that remains. Agent Long, it survived by your father's hands. My own man, you say. Please recall. There was one more thing that was hidden along with the traces of the murder. And that is the existence of the boy who caused the fire. Why did Blaze make the boy disappear? It's because he saw something that he wasn't supposed to see. What was the thing he, thing he wasn't supposed to see? Everything is drawn in this picture. I'm drawing my own man had. The person drawn on the right is most likely the president. The Musilla doll is also drawn near him. And the person standing opposite him is... 
Dogen. A man with a knife and a large black dog. He's none other than Sir Han Dogen. What? The assassin? Why would an assassin appear before a precedent? The answer is clear. Indeed, what occurred that night on the orphanage grounds 12 years ago was not a kidnapping. It was a presidential assassination. Th then, Miss Roland and Mr. Blaze were... Yes, the two were likely partners in crime. One furnished the orphanage to use as the scene of the incident. The other covered up the young boy's testimony. It's likely that Mr. Cameron was murdered because he witnessed the assassination itself. After all, the kidnapping never actually happened. Is he messing around? You're saying that the president was assassinated 12 years ago. We just found his body today. He's been alive up until now. That's right! I mean, we met him ourselves! If the president was assassinated 12 years ago and the president's body was found today, that would imply there were two presidents. Yeah, and that can't be right. Are you sure about that? There is the possibility that there were two, two. There is the possibility that there were two presidents. That's right. Up until now, I've been getting a strange feeling from the president. And so I still respect the man. Cheng Fa is a small country, but he carried the nation w with his strength image of President Huang that Agent Lung described. You, you were wrong, I... He revealed his true form. It differs far too greatly from the President Huang we knew. It's as if they were two entirely different people. If they were, in fact, two Shengfa presidents. Exactly how would such a scenario be possible? would make the existence of the two presidents possible. The president had a twin brother. One of them was a body double. If we were to assume that one of them was a body double, wouldn't it be possible then? Body double. President Huang possessed immense power and authority in Zheng Fa. I'm sure there were those who envied his position and made attempts on his life. Twins. <laughs> yes. Just as he was attacked a few days ago at Gord Lake. It's true. Uh, there were those who sought Huang's life from time to time. I can't easily believe there were two presidents. At least, not without any evidence. Do I have evidence that proves there were two presidents? Uh, body double SS5 incident files again. The problem? Hold on. Hmm, the president of Shang Fa, the Jun Huang, was kidnapped on February 10th. 10th, 12 years ago. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of 100 million dollars. Dai Long Long confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was up at the Shang Fa embassy until midnight. Investigation had an appointment at midnight. Hmm, interesting. I mean, surely they would have been aware of if you had a twin brother, you know. Has Agent Lung not noticed this contradiction? Or has he noticed it but can't admit it? What is it, Mr. Prosecutor? You shout something out only to suddenly clam up. According to the recording on the doll, the president visited the orphanage at midnight. However, that should not have been possible. Huh? Why is that? Why? Because at the time, the president should have been at the embassy. He was together with Agent Lung's father. So Agent Lung, you really did notice. He was in two places at the same time. Ergo, there must have been two presidents. Then, which of the two was the real president on that day 12 years ago? Most likely the one who died. Who? Who contracted Dogen to murder Huang? In order to learn that first, we must have a look at the evidence that we proved was false earlier. 
And the piece of, piece of evidence we know to be false is, uh, it was the photo. Take the photo taken with Cameron's camera. I thought I read his name wrong, but no, his name is actually Cameron. <laughs> was taken after he was murdered. And he was murdered because he witnessed the president presidential assassination. In other words, the photo must have been taken following the assassination. Given that, who is the president pictured in the fake photo? We must consider him to be the body double. In other words, the body double and had the real president murdered and then took his place. My camera camera, that's what I- That's what I read into in my head and I was like, huh? No wait, that can't be right. <laughs> Patricia Rowland and Blaze must have cooperated on, in that plan. Hold it! Wong's body was never found. Just where could it have disappeared to? The answer to that is already quite apparent. Apparent. This is where the real president's body was. The fire. No. I just had a fucking realization this is my say. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Monsters footprint. Last night, there was something Blaze had to unearth with his own two hands. That item was not the ransom. It was something far more important. Huh? So Blaze and Barry the... The real president's body. The possibility is quite high. What do you say? The bones from the body buried 12 years ago would have still remained. According to Mr. Powers, construction was to begin soon at the slot. <laughs> I didn't remember this part myself. You can just like see when I realized it. Because I'm like looking here and I'm like, how does that make sense? I'm like, isn't it the fire? And then I'm like, oh... <laughs> And that was the deadline, both for the movie and the retrieval of the body. Because they would have found the body when they started the construction! Agent Lang, let us search the footprints that Blaze dug up. Yeah, the body was buried there, there'd be traces of it. Hey, somebody call forensics! We have the results of the search. We found traces in the dirt to suggest a body was buried there. <laughs> so he was wrong after all. We also recovered the skeletal, skeletal remains that Blaze the Best dug up. They were in his home. In addition to the bone structure, the dental records and the bone fractures all match up. We can confirm that it was indeed President Huang. So the real President Huang was indeed killed 12 years ago. The SS5 incident was a murder. So the SS5 incident was actually a murder incident. But there is so much information, it's way too confusing. Indeed, let us take this opportunity to review the details of the case. First, the real president came to the orphanage, right? Twelve years ago, the true president Huang visited the orphanage in order to meet his son. The footsteps in the snow that we thought belonged to Mr. Cameron were most likely made by the president at that time. President Huang was supposed to meet his son here. However, the one who actually showed up was the assassin, Sir Han Dogen. He came here to meet his son and was murdered instead. How horrible. A man like Dogen shows no mercy. And after that, the second tragedy occurred. You mean Mr. Cameron's murder? Indeed. Mr. Cameron saw the decisive moment. After the real president was killed by Dogen, his body was carried to the rear courtyard by the team of kidnappers. Mr. Cameron must have witnessed that moment from the orphanage entrance. Although, he himself believed that he had actually witnessed a kidnapping. 
Furthermore, by this time... The body double who had come to meet up with Blaze and Miss Rowland was already standing behind Mr. Cameron. And then the witness to the incident, Mr. Cameron. It's a... It's a Japanese name, or... I believe it's like the name of like some... A Japanese Buddhist or something. It's also the name of like this... Uh, this... I don't know exactly what to call him. He is... Uh, a YouTuber, kind of, I guess. No searching, okay? No searching. No searching for anything, okay? Because that's spoiler territory immediately. Do not search anything. <laughs> okay, good. And then the witness of the incident, Mr. Cameron, was killed by the body double. So, was Mr. Cameron's corpse also carried by the, by the, by the body double? Yes, that seems likely. There wasn't anything at the crime scene that looked like the body double's footprints. <laughs> I've already figured out how we accomplished that. There was a piece of evidence that would have made it possible. What did the body double use to move the body without leaving any footprints? Take that. This is almost certainly how the body double carried Mr. Cameron's corpse. Yes. That's, that's, that's what it was. But do not search any further, alright? <laughs> After Mr. Cameron was killed, the president's body double carried him into the middle of the garden. I suspect the body double was wearing the same shoes as the, as the real president at the time. If he made sure to step precisely on top of the footprints left by the real president. Okay, good, good. Ha! Ah, since the shoes were the same! There would only be one set of footprints left behind in the snow. I think I've got a pretty good grasp on the SS5 incident now. From Taylor Momsen? Out of all people? <laughs> And there's still one thing I don't get. What's that? Why did they need to stage the abduct abduction? Because Mr. Cameron witnessed the incident. He saw the president at the orphanage. He left behind witness testimony on Miss Crane's answering machine. Even Blaze couldn't make that disappear. Ergo, the body double needed a reason for the president to have been at the orphanage. And that's why they, pre they prepared the fake kidnapping charade. The body and the fake photo are the body double, and most likely Patricia Rowland. The person in the coat is Miss Rowland? What makes you say that? The two would have to leave the orphanage in order to take the picture. Just like when he moved the body, the double used the real president's footprints. Ah, so the second set of footprints must belong to the person in the coat. Indeed. We originally believed that those footprints belonged to Cameron's killer. They were size 7 footprints, too small for Blaze's feet. Thus, we can presume that the person playing the part of the kidnapper was Patricia Rowland. Hidden in the shadow of the presidential kidnapping was a presidential assassination. I see. So that's why my old man... Why he... what? The old man must have realized that a murder had taken place. After all, he had the kid's drawing. However, that picture was never presented as evidence. The father likely took it from the young witness during the investigation and hid it. He had to have known that Juan was dead. What if he had revealed that back then? Revealed the death of the president, the backbone of Sheng Fa. It would have caused chaos. And that's when my old man took the secret to his grave. He even took the blame for the kidnapping, knowing that would be the fall of the House of Long. 
So this is the truth that Agent Long's father hid 12 years ago. And now, it's all become clear. Is that really the case, I wonder? Huh? What? Who's there? A bell. It's... Sirhan Dogen. You, why are you here? How can you just recently show up here? Who do you think you are, pal? I found the conversation most intriguing, and I just... Well... Huh. Are you feeling nostalgic about an old murder of yours? You're the one who killed Huang. <laughs> Nostalgia? I think not. You were speaking about the person I am searching for. You're searching for someone. I escaped from, the, from prison in order to meet with the young acolytes. The one who wore the red raincoat. The red raincoat? Who is this person? I suspect that it's the same person as the mastermind you are searching for. Someone you've been searching for. The one in the red hood. The red hood. Don't they seem surprised, Anubis? Yes, yes they are, my boy. Twelve years ago, this young acolyte saved my life. Certainly, it was I who killed President Huang. What is happening with the case? You ain't seen nothing yet! <laughs> However, my life was also targeted on that day. Body double, Blaze and Patricia all sought to seal my lips. Had I not been reunited with the young acolyte back then, I would have been in danger. But alas, and to this day, I do not know what has become of the young acolyte. So your client was indeed the body double who was the main perpetrator of the crime. <laughs> it was a long time ago, but I remember his words even now. There have been countless attempts on my life, such as once or twice, countless. And yet, why must I be the only one to face the danger? When I stand before the people, I garner the same respect as the president does. Tell me, just what is the difference between him and me? I don't know who that was. The difference was great, and the voice and style of speech may be the same. <laughs> you can mimic the body, but the heart cannot be reproduced. I suppose his own weakness cost him, cost him in his quest to become a leader. The Rook's gone, I'm in charge. I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. What are you saying? I'm totally the leader now. Hmm. Perhaps the king and his knight were not so different after all. The double believed that the president's but only weakness was a woman named Amy. To find the woman, he needed the assistance of someone from this country. So he joined forces with Blaze. After determining her whereabouts, he simply waited for the right opportunity. A chance came with the meeting at the orphanage. Indeed, the director of the, or director of the orphanage was bribed and brought in as an accomplice. He must be referring to Patricia Rowland. Well, from what I've told you, do you realize the whereabouts of the young acolyte now? You mean the boy who saved you. But how do you know that he is the mastermind? day, the young one caused a fire at the garden of the orphanage. Ha! Huh, you're talking about the kid who started the fire as a prank! A prank? <laughs> Not at all. On that night, 12 years ago, the young acolyte was hiding inside the igloo. It seems he witnessed Patricia and Blaze moving the body from his hiding place. Apparently, he heard them talking during that time. It would seem that they were planning to kill me because I knew the truth. He immediately came to the main hall to tell me that. I learned this about the young acolyte some time later. It 
seems he was wearing a red raincoat at the time. He led me out of the main hall. And then the young acolytes said he was going to get rid of our footprints. So he scattered some lamp oil near the igloo over the snow. And he boldly set the oil ablaze. Ha! Huh, no way! So he set the fire in order to... All their focus was diverted towards the burning flames. I took the opportunity to escape through the rear exit. So the boy in the red raincoat is the mastermind behind this case. Exactly. Isn't that right, Anubis? Yes, boy. Yes, it is. Poor statement. Add. Reunited. So when did you first meet with him? That will be 18 years ago, on the 24th of December. Hmm, interesting. That's, that, that date sounds familiar. Does it not? That is a rather long time ago. On that day, our roles were reversed. I saved the young one's life. There was an unusual snowstorm on that day. The temperature was well below freezing. I took Anubis for a walk in the snow. That's when Anubis noticed something and started running. I followed after him and found a car. I had great difficulty opening the door. It had frozen shut. In the back seat were two young children. Shivering from the cold. Two children. They had remained in the car for an had they remained in the car for an hour longer, they surely would have frozen to death. I brought the two of them to a nearby orphanage. Is there anything about Dogen's story that concerns me? There is something. What concerns me is the date. The twenty fourth of December, eighteen years ago. Are you sure about that? There is no mistake. Could I mean... I know. Significance behind that date. What shows the significance of the date when Dorgan found the children? IS-7. That day, a certain incident occurred. A sculptor was murdered. Huh? During that incident, two young boys went missing. The sons of the victim, Isaac Dover, and the culprit, Dan Gustavia. We never did find out where those two boys went after the case 18 years ago. Oh? They were the sons of a victim and a culprit? It all makes sense now. What makes sense? One of the youths was bound so that he could not move. Mr. Dover did it so that Mr. Gustavia's son couldn't come to the contest venue. Indeed. Gustavia was using his own son as a taste tester. <laughs> to think that was what transpired. Neither child seemed to recall what had happened. They lost their memories. The acolyte told me this when we were reunited 12 years ago. The pair were placed in an extreme situation on the verge of freezing to death. That trauma led them both to suffer from amnesia. Neither could so much as remember his own name. So they didn't even know that they were the sons of Mr. Dover and Mr. Gustavia. Indeed, all I cannot say it conclusively. The probability is quite high. However, we still don't have enough information to deduce the mastermind's identity. Dogen, would you please continue your story? <laughs> Very well. I continued my correspondence with the young acolytes, even after entering prison. Recently, that has all come to an abrupt halt, however. It left me quite concerned. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into incidents one by one. I grew more and more curious, and so I absconded briefly from the prison. 
those involved 12 years ago. For Patricia Rowland, plays the best, and President Huang's body double. Miss Rowland was the warden of Mr. Dogen's prison. <laughs> I blackmailed the warden. That woman had tried to kill me. Perhaps the good prosecutor has already deduced the reason. He murdered President Huang. However, the world still believed he was alive. If you were able to prove the president was a fake, both Patricia Rowland and Blaise the Best would have been in danger. That is correct. And I had heard the proof with my own ears. I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry if I'm being selfish, but I'll be waiting. Who might you be? My apologies, but I am presently waiting for someone. A lot. <laughs> well, I am I am well aware of that, President Wong. Are you not meeting with your son? However, I do not spill blood needlessly. You may relax. I seek only the president's life. He's blind. Of course it's a service dog. <laughs> it can't be. But please wait. I am just about to meet my son for the first time. I'm sure... I'm sure this will be the first and last well, the last time. Please, at least wait until we are finished. I had thought the president would beg for his life, but he was of a different sort. Officially, the president had no son. However, he shook his head and said, This illegitimate son was his, and he intended to recognize him publicly. Furthermore, he claimed that he had already made preparations towards that end. Would that son of his be the boy with horns over there by any chance? Boy with the horns? Wait, you can see John's horns? <laughs> there is no need to see them. From the moment I escaped from prison until now, I have been closely lending an ear to your voices. He said that the president made preparations towards rec recognizing his son. But the word preparations alone would be insufficient for blackmail. That's it. There was one thing that could prove Huang's words. The will held by the House of Long. It was also proof of his trust in us. His son's existence would have been revealed to the world. The name on the recording, the mention of preparations, and the will in Sheng Fa. <laughs> Together, they suffice to make the warden bow to my words. With those three pieces of information, one could prove the identity of the double. Using John. The president blocked the first strike of my knife with something soft. As pieces of it fell atop the snow, I struck once more. This time the blow proved fatal. So Dogen cut off the Mozilla's horn. Mozilla doll's horn. None but I heard his final words. Only myself and that child knew of the president's secret son. Okay, continue this part. Correspondence. Press. There we go. In other words, you contacted him from prison. <laughs> that is correct. A post office box was used. A post office box? It would allow one to send and receive letters without re revealing the recipient's location. I could not use a form of correspondence that would reveal the acolyte's location. Someone keeping watch over my correspondence is after all. He must mean the prison warden, Trisha Rowland. To be more specific about the nature of your correspondences, well, they were mainly moves from my correspondence chess matches. Correspondence chess? If I recall, the person you were playing against. This might be hard to believe. The Dogen's chess opponent was. Ha! Huh. Are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? Wasn't it Horace Knightley? We certainly found the correspondence chess memo in Knightley's cell. Does that mean... Knightley boy was the kid from the IS-7 incident? Could... That really be true? Is there any evidence connecting Knightley to the IS-7 incident? 
Oh, yeah. Okay, here we fucking go. This... Is like, gonna fucking... This was all that Knightley left behind. There'd be a clue hidden within. Which should I investigate? The ring or the chessboard? Ring. Where have we seen this ring before? This ring is... Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? Mr. Shields, take a look... Please take a look at this ring. This pattern is... It's Pierre Rouquet's. Thought so. He had Mr. Dover's seal turn into a ring. However, why would he have this? Shouldn't it have been held by the police as evidence from the IS-7 incident? After the incident, the seal was returned to the victim's next of kin. And Mr. Dover's only family was his son. But since no one knew where the son had gone to, it took a while to get it to him. I had heard that the police had finally found him and delivered him his inheritance, but... So the seal was thereby safely delivered to his son. And then, he turned the seal into a ring and wore it on his person. So... Mr. Knightley was Mr. Dover's son. Police aren't fools. I'm sure they did a thorough check before handing over the seal. If someone involved in the IS-7 incident was his chess opponent... Knightley, huh? Then that man must be m the mastermind behind the case. But Knightley is dead. He cannot be involved in this incident. How about that? The only one who could be the mastermind was himself a murder victim. But if that guy can't be the culprit, so there's no way that's right. It certainly is strange. In that case, who is the culprit? No! Okay, so basically what happened was that we found out Reveal the chessboard. It's not the chessboard. It's the ring That is made from his father's memento, which is Pierre Houquet's seal and Pierre Houquet as we know is Isaac Dover. So now we know that Knightley was one of the children from the IS-7 incident. I don't have the picture of the kids with their fathers. No. Recently, that has all come to a halt. However, it left me quite concerned. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago, I already read that. Writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. Here we go. Writing letters in Braille. Does this look like Braille to you? I'm certain you said you wrote your letters in Braille. Correct. A good prosecutor must know that I am lacking in sight, do you not? The correspondence chess letter we found had been typed up using a word process processor. What? That cannot be. What do you mean? So, someone went out of their way to retype the letters on a computer. 
Could another person have acted as a middleman between the dog and the nightly? What do you mean? Dogen wrote his letters in Braille. However, by the time it reached Nightly, it had been rewritten on a word processor. We must assume that some middleman rewrote those letters. The reverse can also be said. The same somebody might have taken the letters Nightly wrote and re-delivered them to Dogen. Yes, that is indeed true. Nightly and Dogen both communicated through a certain individual. Dogen, were the letters that reached you? They were in Braille, of course. So Nightly Boy's letters must have been transposed by that same person as well. Oh, then that somebody must be... the mastermind behind the case. You're saying there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case. And who the hell is it? Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. I don't mean Dane Gustavia's son. But who the heck is he? If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be. We're all the only friends either of us has had since childhood. He was the same as me. We never had real families. Can't be. Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gone all pale. I figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who has been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself, but it is someone we know quite well. The mastermind is. Alright. Who we think it is, boys. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant to do. No, that's not... I... I just tried to... <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, I get it. I... mastermind behind this case sent a letter to Jill Crane which deceived Blaze. Furthermore, he kidnapped John and eavesdropped on us. However, of all his actions, the one I have not been able to get out of my mind. It's how he brought an unconscious K to the roof. Giant monster. Huh? Can you just say something? That's right. The key to exposing the mastermind is in the monster's true form. I almost forgot. Um, if you'd like, please come to our next show. I'll also be performing in it. The very big circus is always fabulous and fun for all ages. Miss Swift, there is something I would like to ask of you. What? You mean me? You said that you recorded the sound of Musilla spewing flames. Would this decisive evidence of yours be something you recorded on that tape recorder? It's Mr. Edgeworth for you. You're good at figuring things out, aren't you? It's the sound of Musilla spewing out fire. This place nearly became a sea of flames. That's right! I ain't actually seen it with my own eyes, though. Could you let us listen to the tape? Sure thing. There we go. The sound. It's as I thought. So it seems that my reasoning was correct. 
the true nature of the monster and the mastermind. All of my logic is coming together. It's all coming together. <laughs> Miss Hart, you said that you captured a giant eye on film, did you not? Sure did, right here in this photo. We cannot confirm it like this. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Lend us your film analysis device. Okay, but... What do you want to analyze, sir? This photo, please. I'm on it. Is there a new clue in this photo? Boom. This is... See? Ain't the Moozilla side right where I said it would be? Huh. I see. I have finally grasped. The true form of the giant monster that was being controlled by the mas mastermind. G g g g giant monster? Are you admitting it? You are, ain't you? You're admitting that the mighty Moozilla is real. No. This is not Mozilla. This is the eye of a different monster. Please have a look at this. It's a flyer for the Berry Big Circus. <gasps> this is... Precisely. There is a rather large balloon with the head of a lion picture here. This balloon is the true identity of the giant monster. In addition, the sounds Miss sound Miss Swift recorded, which she believes to be Mozilla spewing flames. He's a prosecutor. Don't tell me. You're gonna see something that'll shatter my dreams of the scoop. But air balloons fly by using burners to heat the air, right, sir? Precisely, detective. The mastermind used this monster of his to bring Kay to the rooftop of the Grand Tower without using the elevator. Wouldn't that mean that the mastermind is someone connected to the circus? He's a member of the circus, Natalie's friend. And Dane Gustavia's son. Who'd have thunk it? An apprentice beast tamer. <laughs> He's no amateur. What is this bad apple? <laughs> that was like the first thing I thought of when I saw this. Oh my god. For the beast he has tamed is none other than this entire case. Simon Keys, he is the mastermind beh behind this whole incident. I'm so glad I saved this part for today. <laughs> Mr. Keys, was really behind it all? It's kind of funny, isn't it? Because for the murder of Knightley, um, Simon was the main suspect, and he was being suspected by Sebastian. So. Technically, Sebastian has been right all this time. <laughs> if we just listen to him. <laughs> I mean, he it, it, it wasn't, like, the actual murderer of Knightley. But <laughs> our boy is living in 2040. His mind. <laughs> no way. I don't believe it. I mean, we trusted him. How could it all have been a lie? That's just... Heartbreaking. Okay. Hmm? What is it? Hey, you, stop! Where do you think you're going? <laughs> the boy with horns is rather perceptive. The good prosecutor has done a remarkable job. Now that I have heard that, I have no further business here. What? Wait! Dogen! Can we pet the dog? <laughs> Damn it. Where you vanished to? Mr. Edworth, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. However, that guy. John? That dogging guy. He's the one who killed my dad, right? There's no question more difficult to answer. However,. There's no use in denying the truth. Yes, John. You are correct. He'll pay for this. I swear he's gonna pay. 
I'll make him pay my son. John, you mustn't finish that thought. Prosecutor Edgeworth, please pay us no mind. Sir, I put on an APB on, on Dogen. All, all available police units will be searching for him. You heard the man, kid. I don't mean to be heartless, but we need to hurry too. So, Mr. Prosecutor, where is the mastermind right now? Agent Long is right. Our top priority right now should be catching the mastermind. He said he would be practicing. He's most likely at the very big circus tent. But first, Agent Long, I have a request. A request? What is it? Now that we identified the giant monster, our next order of business is to capture it. The moment we arrive at this tent, I need you to locate that specific item post-haste. And Detective, I ask that you perform a follow-up investigation on the kidnapping incident. Roger that, sir. Mr. Edgeworth, I want to help out too. Hmm, in that case, you'll be in charge of calling for backup. If he is truly the mastermind, we may require assistance from a certain someone. I met him so many times, yet his facade always fooled me into sympathy. He may have got the better of me in the past. But this time, I'll settle it once and for all. Alright, let's go. Last part. It's a long one. And we already spent like one hour on the first one. That was a fast chapter. We sat here for an hour. <laughs> So it's not that fast, really. Worth, Mr. I can't speak. Are you guys here for the show? Mr. Keys, Miss Barry. We're a little early. I'm sorry, but we're still getting ready. And I'm so happy you came! You remembered our promise! Yes, I remembered. You asked us to come and see the show when you gave me this. I'm so happy you came! Please enjoy yourselves. I'm sure my performance will surprise you, Mr. Edgeworth. Your performance has already surprised me, Mr. Keys. Um, but he hasn't performed yet. Regina, please have a look at this photo. Is this balloon the property of the Berry Big Circus? Oh, it, it is! Did you see it flying around somewhere? It's highly likely that this balloon was used by the culprit in the case we are investigating. Huh? Who is in charge of the balloon? Well, that would be Simon, but are you saying... Mr. Keys, you flew this balloon in the middle of the night, did you not? I do occasionally practice alone at night. I'm not much of a pilot, though. I'm a little clumsy. <laughs> so for practice, you'll do something as challenging as flying a balloon at night. Wouldn't that be rather difficult for someone who is clumsy and not much of a pilot? The monkey did it. Then, what do you think I was doing, Miss Redworth? You brought Kate to the roof of the Grand Tower in order to frame her for the murder of Jill Crane. Not a single security camera recorded Kate using the elevator. Therefore, the only way she could have gotten up there was through flight. And the only one who could have flown her up there was you, Mr. Keys. No way, Mr. Edgeworth. How can you say that? That's not all. You drugged John at the garbage pickup and kidnapped him. We're not gonna cross-examine the monkey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wasn't that why you were late when you came to watch the trial of Patricia Rowland? No way. I have no idea what you're saying. There's no way I could do things like that. Well, not with that. <laughs> please believe me. Mr. Edwards, please. I wanted to believe you. However, you have broken that trust yourself. Th that's horrible. Why would you say that? Didn't you once say that you would trust me? That you believe in me? 
Don't you worry about that. We're your allies. That's because we're like birds of a feather, right, Ms. Redgeworth? Birds of a feather, huh? I suppose that's true. We have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Knightley. Rather, you are probably the most affected by the by his death. And I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was sitting here like, mm, about that. <laughs> but like only internally. I was trying my best like to not make it look obvious that I knew all this time. <laughs> right, I'll get you out of here. We'll believe in you. So sad. Most words were all lies. It wasn't a lie. I really did trust you. Kay, you knew? You said we were like birds of a feather, and yet... I'm hurt, Kay. You hurt me deeply. I... I... Oh. Hey, Miss Redworth. Maybe Simon isn't the bad guy after all. I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now. All too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind this entire case. Dude, do be gaslighting. He do be, though. I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you. Hmm. So it's come to this after all. You're always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But I rather like that. Because now... I can rip that confidence to shreds. <laughs> Good work, everyone. His personality has completely changed. The animal tamer who could not tame animals. <laughs> that was all a facade. This is the real Simon Keys. Simon! True, is it? Truth or lie? What difference does it make? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth just made me a little upset, that's all. <laughs> Take responsibility for upsetting me, right? Sorry, but you're no Madangar. This is like Madangar 2.0. It's true. I practiced with the balloon two nights ago. That photo must have been taken when the balloon and I passed near a building. For the sloppy seconds. I often fly around that area for advertising purposes. There's nothing unusual about that, right? You often fly around the Grand Tower in the balloon. Yeah, even the circus needs to advertise. Regina, is that true? Y yep, it was Simon's job to advertise using the balloon. Most people who live around here should have seen it. Balloon was used in the crime we are investigating. Like I said, it's just a coincidence. I simply happened to pass by the Grand Tower when that photo was taken. I shall determine whether or not it was a coincidence after I hear your full story. Gotta press this. It was the balloon launched from this tent. There's a nice big park near the Sunshine Coliseum. They always launch the balloon there. I see. In that case, how do you transport the balloon to the park? No thoughts, just squirrels? <laughs> well, it's too heavy to carry by hand. It weighs several hundred pounds. And yet, it can fly in the sky. Amazing, isn't it? I asked you how you transported it. Now answer the question. 
Aw, I can't even make some small talk. You're mean, Mr. Edgeworth. I used a truck. The balloon is loaded onto the back of the truck. A truck. Yeah. The last time I took the truck and the balloon out was two days ago. Hmm, I cannot overlook that piece of testimony. Okay. Two days ago, you say? Let's get the truck. Objection. This transformation is literally letting his hair down and opening his eyes. <laughs> The truck you put the balloon balloon into. Was it blue by any chance? Blue? So what if it is? Today, we saw a blue truck carrying a large basket. That truck just so happened to be yours. Then your claim that you last used it two days ago becomes a lie. Agent Long. Emma. Mr. Edgeworth, I finally found you. I've been searching for you ever since the incident yesterday. I dashed right over after Kay contacted me just a little while ago. Prosecutor Edgeworth, the thing you were looking for, I found it. was placed in the blue truck at the dressing room parking lot. The blue truck, as I suspected. That truck is, without a doubt, the one I saw today. Look, he blinked, nothing happened. There you have your answer. <laughs> there are a number of blue trucks out there, you know? Who's to say you're not mistaking it for a different one? It's definitely that one. I got a good look at it. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, was that... It, it wasn't me. Okay. Words have no strength without evidence to back them up. Oh, that's Mr. Edgeworth's voice! Evidence. Present evidence. Do I have any evidence to prove that this was the truck I saw today? Huh? What's wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? Why are you touching the truck? The truck's body is cold to the touch. It seems to have been parked here for some time. You can figure all that out just by touching it? What could prove that this is the truck I saw? Fingerprints. This is the same as um, the, the mask the mask case. I'd like to dust the truck for fingerprints. Huh? Fingerprints? What for? I don't see any point in that. A certain person's fingerprints should be left on this truck. And these fingerprints will prove this truck was parked in front of the Grand Tower today. Whose fingerprints prove this truck was in front of the uh, tower? Miles's. Edgeworth. Or fingerprints? Indeed. Earlier today, I touched a truck at the plaza in front of the Grand Tower. I'd like to dust for my prints. Emma, I'd request a scientific investigation. That's what I'm here for. Just leave it to me. Alright, we're all set. Go ahead, Mr. Edgeworth. Wait, you want me to do it? Of course. Who else but Mr. Edgeworth would be up to the task? I'll show you how it's done. Alright then. You're the scientist. Why don't you just do it yourself? First, we sprinkle some aluminium powder on over the area you want to investigate. Like this. Yes, we know how to do this. Touch the screen and I know how to... Powder will adhere to the fingerprints and once... Blah, 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 blah. Throw it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Just let me do it. Got it? Yes, I think so. Just so you know. Yes, I know how. Hold on. I don't know if this actually works. Nope, it doesn't work. I swear I got it to work like before. Microphone settings. Uh, I can do this though. Right? Nope. 
how do I? Oh, the um, the mic hotkey. I don't. Hold on, let me find the hotkey. Microphone disabled. What can be microphone? Nope, not that one. Uh, not that one. Okay, that one. There we go. Oh, that's way better. <laughs> Got one! That's a nice, clean fingerprint. Let's run the prints against mine post-haste. Alright, just leave it to me. These are definitely your fingerprints, Miss Redworth. Well, it seems to me that we have just proven your statement to be a lie. Yes, there is. Uh, so you have to go to like can to config, and then you have to go to microphone settings first of all, and then you can use the you can use the microphone. I used it last time, so I was thinking it would work this time. But maybe it doesn't work because I'm using it. To stream, I don't know exactly how that works, but anyways, then you have underneath there it says that these modes require uh, use of the mic hotkey, which you can find under config and go to hotkeys, and then you find microphone, and you can use internal noise sample and ran uh, random white white noise uh, and a microphone sample. So there are like four different ways you can do it. And then I just like made a hotkey. I just made it Q because I don't really use it when I play DS games. So, but this is not an emulator. I, I just want to say this is not an emulator at all. <laughs> Seems to me we have just proven your statement to be a lie. <laughs> what were you doing when you were driving this truck around? I love it so much. Just taking it out for a joyride? Kay was abducted two nights ago. Your balloon was sighted not far from the scene. Today, there was another kidnapping in which a garbage truck was used. And once again, your truck was seen nearby. This all sounds like nothing more than a pure coincidence to me. So it was pure coincidence that you parked near two separate kidnappings. I doubt that. You were involved in both kidnappings, weren't you? Isn't it a bit rash to automatically assume that the two kidnappings were connected? And what if I had evidence to prove th that the two crimes were performed by the same culprit? Oh, you're serious? I can't wait to hear this! What did Kay and John's kidnappings have in common? Oh, the sleepy ZZZ. Where is the sleepy? Where is the Where is the sleepy? Hello? Oh, there it is, dumbass. <laughs> Kay was knocked out with a powerful sleeping drug, and a bottle of sleeping drugs was found lying next, lying in the place where John was confined. The contents of the bottle. Or a match with the drugs used on Kay. So that's all you've got, huh? And here I was, getting all my hopes up. So the same sleeping drugs were used. So what? You think that connects the two incidents? Surely, you must realize it yourself. That doesn't prove a thing. <laughs> there must be something. Evidence that proves he is connected to those cases. The police, prosecutors, and even you, Mr. Edgeworth. In the end, you're all the same. You make up evidence as you see fit, just so you can send some poor soul to prison. Isn't there someone like that here? A poor soul who was wrongly accused in the past? Objection. You're wrong. Who would do such a thing? Objection. Then show me the evidence. If you're going to accuse me of a crime, it's only natural. Mm -hmm. It's no use. I can't seem to find any other threads linking him to the kidnappings. Now then, 
Have you finally run out of ammo, Mr. Edgeworth? I still have preparations to make at the circus. So if you'll excuse me. Objection. Now now, you two. No need to get so heated. And Simon, you're looking good in that clown makeup. For once, the air quotes finally make sense. <laughs> hey, what's your deal? Don't just butt in like that. Uncle Ray's not so good in such a stiff environment. I mean, why so serious, right? Hey Kay, how about a little trick? At last, my moment has arrived. The Great K for a day presents a Simon impression. Objection! What? Well, you? Enough already. Psst. Hey Miles, I'm paying you some time to get all your ducks in a row. There's probably a better way to solve for time than this, but what else? Woo! Nice one, K. I'm not so sure about this method either. But I have to find something that connects Simon to the case, and I need to find it now. Is there evidence not related to the kidnapping that's connected to the mastermind's identity? That's it! The mastermind is the same person as the young acolyte Dogen was looking for. Sorry, I'm just like, kind of like, imagining this, but with... Uh, you know how when Phoenix is in a pinch that he gets his, like, flashes of Mia? It's like that, but it's... But it's Phoenix instead. <laughs> Just like, you have to turn it around. <laughs> and he's like, oh! <laughs> Their mastermind is the same person as the young acolyte Dogen was looking for. If I can just connect the young acolyte to Simon... Which piece of evidence could be connected with the Mastermind's true identity? Flashes of bait. <laughs> but like, I'm not actually imagining like the actual Phoenix sprite, I'm imagining <laughs> the, the Mia sprite with Phoenix's face for some reason. <laughs> Which is why it's so funny to me. Anyways, where the hell is it? What am I looking for? I am looking for the correspondence chess memo. This thing. Knightley and Dogen both communicated through a certain individual. Oh? Then that somebody must be... the mastermind behind the case. That's it. The mastermind played a role in the correspondence chess. If I can prove that it was Simon, then... That's enough. I can't stomach any more of your sorry excuse for a performance. If you have no more in objections, then I ask that you let me get back to preparing for the show. Thank you for the help, Mr. Shields. Though you may have taken it a little too far. You sure look happy. I take it you found something. Look at me, I'm Simon. Simon's a clown. The funny, funny clown. Okay, you can stop now. Now then, Mr. Keys. Do you happen to like chess? Hm. I was rather out of the blue. But since you asked, I can't say I dislike chess. The mastermind played correspondence chess with Sir Handogen. If I recall, it was Knightley who had been playing chess with Dogen, wasn't it? Are you saying that he was the mastermind? There was no way Knightley could have been could have been the mastermind. The reason being, the mastermind had continued to work behind the scenes even after Knightley's death. That being the case, who could have written this letter? I believe someone acted as the middleman between Dorgan and Knightley. So you're saying that you think I'm the middleman? <laughs> and just why would I have to go through all that trouble and do something like that? It was likely to make it appear as if there was a connection between Knightley and Dorgan. And as a result, Knightley was killed by Patricia Rowland. No way! Are you saying it was all set up so that he would be killed by her? What are you saying? There's no way I could manipulate a person that far. <laughs> Look at me! Well, it takes all I have just to get the animals to perform tricks. 
you have a a chipmunk holding up a cat. <laughs> if only just a scrap of the letters he exchanged with Knight still remained. It'd be decisive evidence. I'd like to investigate your room. There could be decisive if it's the letters you're looking for. You won't find any in there. What? I'm the type of guy who throws his letters away as soon as he's done reading them. Where's the point in living in the past? <laughs> Does that mean he has already gotten rid of the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth, everything you have said so far has been nothing more than baseless conjecture. Evidence. I'm just one step behind it. What should I do? Am I all out of moves? Without evidence, I won't allow you to cast doubt on my friendship with Knightley. Who was that? Huh, I excuse me? Miss Perry. What's on her mind? I've been listening in on what you all were saying and, um... When you say Mr. Knightley, you mean Simon's friend, Mr. Knightley, right? Yes, that's correct. Does she know something? This morning, a letter arrived from Mr. Knightley. It was for Simon. What? What did you say? But that's impossible. Knightley's already dead. Miss Berry, please let me see that letter. Okay, here you go. Quick, open it. This is a correspondence chest letter. Oh, wait, it's like the... Oh no, this is right, right. Indeed. Next move. Move the pawn to g6. Now can you see the path to checkmate? I can't wait to see the look on your face. You weren't expecting to lose again. At chess against me, right? This is a correspondence chess letter. This is the response to Dogen's last move. Now can you see the path to my checkmate? Can't wait to see the look on your face. You weren't expecting to lose a chess against me, right? The postmark says March 26th, day before Knightley's death. It seems the letter arrived late. Since the circus moves around so much, a lot of the male people send us male people send us arrive late. Now why was this letter addressed to you? Busted. Also, don't grab the rabbits by their ears. Poor bunnies. This is proof that you were the middleman between Dorgan and Knightley. Normally, you would transcribe this letter into Braille before sending it to Dorgan. And in doing so, you created a connection between him and Knightley. Damn it! Curse you, Knightley! Why must you continue to interfere? Simon, why? Wasn't Knightley your only friend? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous! <laughs> I stopped thinking of him as a friend 18 years ago. 18 years ago? That have been the day of the IS-7 incident. Thanks to Knightley, I nearly died that day in the snowstorm. When I was on my way to the contest venue, where my father was waiting. Knightley suddenly appeared. He held me down, tied up my hands and feet, and with tears streaming down his face. He kept apologizing. My dad's too scary. I can't disobey him. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Stop it, Horace. I promised my dad. I said I'd taste his desserts. If I'm not there, dad will be in trouble. I'm gonna let everyone know my dad's desserts are the best in the world! After that, he locked us inside the car and was so cold I could see my own breath. Before we knew it, the doors had frozen shut and not even he could get them open. And then, I lost my father. What? Your father? Horace Knightley was the son of the murderer who killed my father. Wait, now even, even I'm confused. What could this mean? This confession runs contrary to the information we have. 
The name of the victim in the IS-7 incident was Isaac Dover. Isaac Dover is my father's name. Eighteen years ago, my memories were muddled from the shock of my near-death experience. So it wasn't until later that I learned the truth. On that day, my father was murdered. I mean, I can, I can, I can see it now that they're very similar. But hold on, let me find the picture real quick. Hmm. I really was Ben Ben Dolberg. Shut up. Let there be a... <sighs> okay, well... There is something that's been bothering me because like even now I've been like, but which of the kids are the... are which? Okay, uh, pardon the quality of this, by the way. Hold on, let me just... Okay, so, because the one who is tied up... Hold on, wait. So he was the one who tied up... Nightly, then. So that's Nightly. I mean, I guess that makes sense with him, but like... I don't know, I just found it like really weird. <laughs> hmm... I don't know, I just find it kind of strange, I guess. You know, see, that's what we were made to believe. But, like, I couldn't, like, get it to make sense. Because, like, why would they, like, switch... Why would the, the children, like, switch places? Right, so I believe this is Dane Gustavia's son. And this is Isaac Dover's son. Simon. So, Knightley and Simon. But... Nightly was the one who was being tied up inside the car. And didn't Simon just said that he was tied up? So like I can't get it to make sense. <laughs> like obviously you can tell that he is actually like Isaac Dover's son because they look scarily alike. Did the developers lose track? I don't know what happened there. But it's so confusing. Because this is the kid that was uh, tied down. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways. That's just something that's been bothering me a bit. But, okay, anyways, back to the game. <laughs> I learned the truth on that day that my father was murdered. The culprit of the IS-7 incident was a confectioner by the name of Kitin Gustavia. <laughs> so that was the name of Knightley's father. A low-life scum of the earth killed my father. Just the thought of him makes me sick. So you knew who the culprit was all along? Huh. <laughs> of course not. Had I known, I would have tipped off the police a long time ago. All I knew was that Knightley's father was trying to set up my own father. 
That's why I immediately knew that the one who died that day was my dad. Knightley had a hand in my father's murder. A traitor. He was the son of a killer! It's only natural that he ended up dead. It would appear that you are a victim of a very serious misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Just what are you talking about? I sicked over. At the time, he was actively working as a sculptor in France. Under the name Pierre Hoquet. Is that right? I'm sorry to say, I don't remember that at all. Heh. <laughs> it's only natural you don't remember. After all, he's not your real father. Okay! <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> you can't do this to me! Not get me to make sense of stuff, and then just like flip the table on me completely. You can't do that! <laughs> So, indeed, it was as I said originally. But he looks more like Dover than Gustavia. What? <laughs> uh, and Knightley doesn't look like either of them. <laughs> this is game for real. What the Japanese game because of Turkish soap opera. <laughs> Hold on. So, am I? Huh? Hold on. Is this? <laughs> no. Yes, actually. This is my brain right now. <laughs> my brain right now. <laughs> Like, it's as I say, though, you you really would not fucking come to this conclusion on your own. <laughs> Unless you're, like, fucking... Way ahead. Oh my god, what the hell is happening? I'm like... <laughs> what? My brain hurty. Okay, let me fucking pull out that fucking photo again. How does Edgeworth know? Because the police said that they found the the son of Pierre Roquet, right? Of of uh, of Isaac Dover. Let me, hold on, let me no wrong one. This one. Let me go back here. Hmm. Well, actually, wait. Let me go here. Uh, get this. Copy that. Go back here. And just whoop. There we go. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I can't I can't make any sense of this. How do I make sense of this? I'm like <laughs> I mean Did you read the script? Yes. I mean I guess it does make No, he was Knightley's father. Because the police gave him, like, his father's memento, memento, you know. 
Interesting, interesting. But, like, none of the kids look like any of the characters. As adults, I mean. Like, if anything, one would expect, like, Isaac Dover's kid to be Simon. <laughs> My brain, exactly, I'm like, huh? Like, you, you would assume that the one with, like, um, what's, like, the term for those eyes? I don't, I don't know. But you would assume that. <laughs> what the fuck? This fucking broke us. <laughs> Hold on. Like, you would assume that the eyes would, like, stay semi the same. Though I guess, like, not necessarily, you know? But just, like, from, like, a character perspective, or from, like, when you, like, look at a character, you, like, expect there to be, like, some... No! That's knightly. That's what I don't get. Like, I, co I can't make him, like, be knightly. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. It's not monkey boy. It's the other one with the dark hair. Somehow. I don't know. But, like, <laughs> you, would expect, you would expect there to be, like, some character consistency. Right? I believe that's, like, what just throws you off, like, completely. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. Like the other kid who is supposed to be Simon. With dark hair, apparently, for some reason, I don't know how he turned ginger, if he just bleaches and dyes his hair, like, all the time, or what. <laughs> Turn it into a certain order. No, but I believe the police are 100% correct in their findings. For sure. <laughs> okay, let's just fucking get back to the game. Oh my god. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh god, this is painful. I mean, I love it because it's so connected, but like... Yeah, like going from light to something darker? I feel like that's normal. But going from dark to something lighter? I doubt it. Like, I guess it might be normal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Well, yeah, I guess with sun, yeah, but. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you use your clap, clap, claps lock. <laughs> claps lock, <laughs> lock, all, lock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's only natural you don't remember. After all, he's not your real father. Huh? What is that supposed? Is that the, what is that supposed to be a joke? I'm not amused. Hmm. You won't be able to laugh at all once I reveal the truth to you. This piece of evidence proves that you are not Isaac Dover's son. The ring. What's that? Isn't that Knightley's chessboard and his ring? 
I want you to take a good look at this ring's design. There are two letters inscribed in it. And that is the seal of Pierre Roquet, used as his signature. Eighteen years ago, it was found lying near the body of Isaac Dogen. I wouldn't nightly have my father's memento with him. The police had found Isaac Dover's son and gave it to him. Isaac Dover's real son is Horace Knightley. What? Th that means I... Listen, if, 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 if this isn't us right now, honestly... <laughs> I relate, Simon. I don't like you anymore, but I relate. <laughs> In other words, you are Dane Gustavia's son. That's... It's a lie! After all, I'm... My father is... My memories are... I lost my father because Knightley locked me up in the car. That's why... I thought it would be fitting if he were killed as well. It was Dogen's dog. Really? I'll be able to see a circus show? Even in prison? Huh. <laughs> I enjoy playing chess with you, but I'm looking forward to your performance as well. Yes, please look forward to it. Alright, better drop by again. I'll be thinking about my next move. I still can't see it! <laughs> I'm like trying my best! Like... Maybe I could see Knightley because of like, you know, the shaved head. Or like the, what's it called, like a... Better drop by again. I'll be thinking about my next move. But yeah, I left something special inside that chessboard for you. You should check it out later. Something special? I'm not quite sure what you mean, but thanks. I owe you one, Simon. Only you hadn't stopped me 18 years ago. Huh? <laughs> Listen! You can't do this to me, game! I wouldn't have had to come to this. So who was tied up? <laughs> and who... Uh. Huh? Did you say something? Nope, not a word. Goodbye, Horace. After all that, you're saying it was my father who killed Knightley's? No, see, this is so confusing. <laughs> it was Dan Gustavia who had that uh, illness where he couldn't taste anything, or he couldn't like differentiate taste or whatever flavors. So he had his son uh, taste them for him. But didn't Simon say that he hated sweets? This case is destroying my brain. Listen, I've been through this once already and it's like destroying my brain again. <laughs> then, that means, was it all for nothing? I didn't want to become some weakling who could be killed by, a by anyone. That's why. I thought I'd follow in Mr. Dorgan's footsteps. This final look proves it. Simon Keyes, you are Dorgan's correspondence chess partner and the mastermind behind this case. <laughs> That's right, it was me. I'm the mastermind behind it all. This, the case uh, is called the Grand Turnabout. That's 
why I wanted to become Lord Voldemort. <laughs> He's finally showing his true colors. It sure was a grand turnabout, it fucking was. I even knew it was gonna happen and I'm still here like... Huh? <laughs> As you all know, I witnessed the incident 12 years ago. President Huang's assassination. So the child who drew that picture was Simon Keys. When I was found out, I was subjected to horrible interrogations over and over by that heartless Patricia. I'd spend the nights trembling in my bed, terrified of what the next day would bring. I'm sure you can understand why I'd want to sneak out of there, right? However, Blaze would have likely sent pursuers after you. Exactly. I was on the run from them every waking moment, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Maybe that's why he changed his appearance. Who the fuck knows? I couldn't even sleep at night. I'd jump at the slightest noise. Don't make me feel bad for you, bitch. And that's why I became a circus performer. Blaze the Best was the chief prosecutor, and Patricia Rowland was the warden of the prison. For the childhood trauma therapy group. <laughs> An ordinary person would be a match for those two, and there were no adults I could rely on. Furthermore, behind the scenes was the body double who had set those two in motion. Though he was a fake, I was up against the nation's president. Talk about utter despair. Right? My only ally was Mr. Dogen. He saved my life after all. He actually helped me out, unlike Knightley. If this story is true, hmm, it's ironic. Dogen, the fiendish assassin, was idolized by the child he saved. If I followed in his footsteps, I no longer have to worry about being eaten alive. That's right! Now it's my turn! My turn to devour those who would feed upon me! And I suppose you never thought to seek help from the police. No way, no way! As long as Blaze was around, any evidence would be destroyed by him. Actually, didn't something like that almost happen today during Patricia's trial? I knew from the very beginning that things would turn out like this. The evidence from Patricia Rowland's trial. So he's saying that he expected the evidence would be destroyed. I see, so that's why you kidnapped John. To force a guilty verdict, even in the absence of evidence. He's to say, but in order to expose the crimes of 12 years ago, there was no other choice. It's according to you. However, Blaze also attempted to kidnap John in order to manipulate the trial in his favor. Your methods, methods are no different than those of the people you so despise. That's only if I were actually the kidnapper. But I would never do anything so evil. No way, no way, no way. I simply couldn't. Besides, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm actually quite thankful to the real criminals. For giving me the opportunity to extract such sweet revenge. <laughs> So you admit it. Your motive was revenge. Yeah, I admit it. So what? Sure, I held a grunge grudge against those creeps. But it's not like I'm the one who actually killed them, you know? Truth be told, all I did was send some letters. I let Jill in on Blaze's secrets, and let Blaze in on Jill's secrets. And then, the two simply ended up trying to kill each other. Do you mean to say the murder was nothing more than a result of that? Yep, just like the case at Gord Lake. It's way easier than trying to control the wild animals. All I did was come up with a fixed assassination plan for Knightley. See, he was even involved in that. He's literally been behind every single thing this entire game. So that was also a part of his plan. If that's the case, then Rook's murder was also your- Whoa, don't try to pin that on me. Nightly killed him all on his own. Well, it ended up creating the perfect opportunity for me. It's funny how things work out. Can you say such a thing? 
was the same for Patricia Rowland. It made it look like there was a connection between Knightley and Dorgan. By using the correspondence chess match and the chisel in the chessboard. What? You mean to say that you were the one who prepared the chisel? That's right! I thought it would bring Dog into mine. Quite a thoughtful little gift, wouldn't you agree? And that was all it took to get Patricia to murder Knightley. Oh, the feeling that everyone around you is an enemy. <laughs> I know it all too well. The tiniest spark can set off an explosion of fear, resulting in horrific mutual destruction. All I did was watch the comedy of errors and fall from the audience. And you were my final pawn, Mr. Edgeworth. A pawn? Me? When you saw their cases, you brought both Blaze and Patricia to the ruin. And the weapon that delivered the coup, coup de grace was your own logic. I didn't solve those cases for your sake. Oh, I know. You never really cared about saving me. You just wanted to pretend to be a defense attorney, didn't you? What did you... All I had to do was go, no way, no way, no way, and act all scared. And you totally believed me. You were giving it your all, trying to save me. <laughs> so even your arrest was just a ploy to make me use my logic. To be fair, getting arrested wasn't part of the plan. And people began to suspect that the chisel I sent was the murder weapon. Honestly, I broke out in a cold sweat. I thought for sure it would be at the curtains for me. But then, a turnabout of miraculous proportions. The genius prosecutor himself had come to my rescue. Well, doesn't it feel nice to be thanked by me? The one that you saved? You should be grateful. I gave you this chance to play the ace attorney. You're wrong. He wasn't pretending to be a defense attorney. Mr. Edgeworth is always serious about saving people. Even the times when he saved me in the past. Okay. <laughs> is that so? Are you sure he's not just trying to emulate his own father? The one he admires so much? Absolutely not! That's not true at all! No, now, Kay. The person he's talking about now isn't Miles, but rather Simon himself. Clearly, he is not able to trust others. The desire to save someone other than, him than himself is something he cannot even comprehend. Say what you want, but make sure you think about it long and hard. Sure, all my targets for revenge got what they deserved in the end. However... Think about it. Can any one of my actions really be considered a crime? I instigated murder! There is not a single word about that in the letter, is there? If I had said the word kill even once, I guess it could be considered instigation. Well, maybe I did say it, but there's no way for you to prove it. What are you saying? You kidnapped me! I'm sorry, but that hasn't been proven yet, has it? The only thing I admitted to was sending the letters. That's... Besides, those letters contain no threats or coercions. I simply conveyed information. Information that each recipient would find beneficial. <laughs> you crafty little piece of smarky little fucking sh bullshit fucking... Can we do something about it? Um, what was it he said? Integrating murder? Instigating murder is when a person directs someone else to commit murder. The person who directed the murder can be charged as if the murder... As if he committed the crime himself. So we just have to find proof that he directed those murders. You make it sound so easy. To be honest, it kind of pisses me off a little. You're all trying to frame an innocent person for murder. That's all fucking just beat him up. <laughs> Don't you understand? I'm not obligated to waste any more time on this pointless discussion. The police are waiting for you outside of this tent. You have nowhere to run. Really now? You think I wouldn't have an escape route prepared? Oh yeah, sweet. Oh yeah! <laughs> I love it so much. It's so dumb. For example, let's say... I gave an order so that all the animals here attacked you. Now, that if, now what if I were to take my leave during the ensuing chaos? What do you say? You 
can't be serious. <laughs> it was just an example. Wouldn't that make for an interesting show? Here's another idea. What if I pulled out a hidden gun and took John hostage? Hmm, that might be more exciting. I will never allow you to do such a thing. I can't tell whether or not Simon is being serious. However, when it comes to him, we should consider anything a possibility. If you continue to bore me with your drivel, I'll end the show right here. I'd like you to keep that in mind before you make any baseless objections. <laughs> Cannot make any car careless remarks. Isn't there some way I can charge him with his crimes? Four. There's no way for you to prove it. Where is... Nicole, Nicole, Nicole. Objection! <laughs> I got you, Beach. There, there's still a lot. It is my firm conviction that you instigated the murders. After all, you told me so yourself. Hmm, perhaps I should let you in on this, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I was the one who ordered Blaze the Best to kill Jella Crane. What? Did I say that? I really don't remember. You may think you can deceive us as much as you want. But unfortunately for you... Unfortunately. You used a bug to eavesdrop, eavesdrop on our conversations. But there was someone else who wiretapped that bug of yours and recorded the whole thing. It was... Recorded? In other words, the conversation between you and that clown is recorded on that tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Long Ji says, The schemer drowns in his own schemes. And this is what he meant. Miss Swift, I'd like to listen to your tape. Roger! Hi, it's right about here. Mr. Edgeworth, Judge Courtney's cell phone is ringing. Who is this? You're the person who ambushed Kay. Mr. Edgeworth, I want to listen in on this too. Very well. This is where it starts. Well, I must say... Huh? That's odd. What's wrong? Well... There ain't nothing recorded past this point. What? Why? Why wasn't it recorded? <laughs> Too bad, so sad. Did you really think I'd leave behind any incriminating evidence? The bug I planted as a special feature. It can be turned on and off with a remote control. What? That sort of thing exists? Certainly, remote control listening devices do exist. However, are you saying you switched off the device so that your own voice would not be recorded? Precisely! Possible! You couldn't have done that unless you knew you weren't being recorded. Isn't it obvious I knew? I guess you just don't get it. You could call it a hunch. I had a feeling I was being wiretapped. Miss Swift, was it? I figured things out because you knew about the kidnapping. And tell me, you were listening in on that conversation. That's right! Though, come to think of it, I am surprised you didn't realize it until now. Some genius prosecutor you turned out to be, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> oh my! And what was the end result of all this? Ah, since you don't have any proof of the instigation charges, it's game over. <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, was my recording no help to you at all? Ain't there... something? Anything at all in my recording? Miss Swift. Okay. Yes? The bug was planted in your badge, right? Do you have any ideas? How do you expect me to come up with an answer right, right off the top of my head? You were the only one who came into contact with the, vic with the culprit. How unsightly. You're all fussing over useless evidence. Let's move on to the next topic. Next! 
What's this? He seems a bit eager to change the topic of conversation. We literally- <laughs> This was two seconds ago! Only K came into contact with Simon. If any sounds was recorded at the time, she was with the culprit. Miss Swift, how long have you been recording? Since two nights ago, I reckon. Since two nights ago. In that case, when could a conversation with Simon possibly have been recorded? Two nights ago? Two nights ago. Simon brought Kay to the roof. We listened to the recording from that time frame. Miss Swift, please let us listen to the recording from two nights ago. Huh? Uh, Okie dokie. This is... the sound of a hot air balloon. That's right. At the time, Simon was carrying Kay in the hot air balloon. Ergo, he was near Kay. Isn't there anything recorded? Bang clang. Oh, really? Huh? That was... A gunshot. <laughs> Seems you were quick to deactivate the bug. However, you were a little too late. You can't run anymore. That gunshot ties you to the case. Huh? What are you saying? There's no gun involved in this case, is there? No. There should be someone connected to the case who fired a gun. Let's strike with the evidence that points to that person. Which piece of evidence connects the gunshot to the case? Oh, I know, it's this Cressine. Notes. Uh, gunpowder. It's written right here, in the body double's autopsy report. Gunpowder residue was detected on his right hand. <laughs> Where was Kay at the time this gunshot was recorded? That's right. She was being carried to the roof of the Grand Tower in your balloon. And as it turns out, there were a few more people on that very same rooftop at the time. You mean the dub double and me? Oh, certainly. After we talked for a brief moment, the body double noticed something and had me leave before him. And what if the gunshot rang out after that? We can clearly hear it in the recording. I doubt that you wouldn't have noticed it. Do you intend to feign ignorance until the very end? Nothing more than mere conjecture. What we heard on the recording was not just a gunshot. If you listen closely, you can hear the bullet hitting something. If the body double was aiming at Simon, then... The bullet may have struck which piece of evidence? The balloon. The body double likely fired the gun at the balloon. We're still not halfway, by the way. <laughs> we assume that the bullet hit something. It would have been the balloon's basket. Let's examine it immediately! Do 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 This hole. The bullet hole! A bullet hole was found in the basket. You won't be able to talk your way out of this one. Mm -hmm. Do you intend to explain the gunshot and the bullet hole? <laughs> so you figured it out. You're good. I guess it's impossible to hide anything from you. Spit it out already. Okay, okay, no need to be impatient. It happened when I was riding the balloon to the rooftop. I saw the body double and you, Miss Courtney, on the roof. Talk about a surprise! Only the double noticed me. He told Miss Courtney to leave ahead of him. He then pointed a gun at me and fired. Why did he want to shoot down the balloon? It's simple. The body double had intended to kill Miss Courtney. K kill me? That's right. You talked to the double about John, didn't you? Well, it's not like the body double would have met with you otherwise. 
From his point of view, it was like showing him evidence that he was a fake. You mean, he was afraid of Judge Courtney because she knew about John's past. Afraid? That's exactly right! And that body double was a coward after all, but like, why not kill her and then like shoot, you know? I even remember how his hands were trembling when he fired the gun at my balloon. Are we all clear now? I was only there by chance. Just a friendly witness who was passing by. Really now? Press on fourth statement. He then pointed a gun. The bullet struck the balloon's basket cleanly. I panicked and quickly tried to get away so he wouldn't shoot me down, but... Talk about a close call. You say you tried to get away right then. That's right. Is there a problem? Is there a problem with this statement? There is a problem. You must have placed Kay on the rooftop. You couldn't have gotten away before then, correct? Yeah, that's right. I forgot. After the body double fired one shot, he entered the hatch to the 51st floor. I looked around for a bit, and then landed on the roof. Please add that statement to your testimony. Sure, I don't mind. After the double fired one shot, he entered the hatch up to the 51st floor. Modest testimony, because you didn't see anyone else. Once again, you lied. Lied? The body double could not have entered the storage room, storeroom from the 51st floor on the 51st floor two nights ago. Miss Hart's testimony proves it. What? Can you trust that sham journalist's testimony? What do you say? You can't insult my mentor like that. Two nights ago, that lady was staking out the 51st floor. Given that, just how did that body double leave the roof? Indeed, that is what we must now prove. If he did not use the elevator or the 51st floor to leave the roof, then only one route remains. How did the body double leave the roof without using the elevator or the 51st floor? Balloon. The body double. Flu. He. Flu? Simon Keys. He rode in your balloon. Hey, hey, stop joking around. Why would I have needed to give the body double a lift? The elevator had a security camera, and the 51st floor was being watched by Miss Hart. Your balloon was the only way the body double could have left the roof. <laughs> At the circus, we often perform dangerous stunts in order to surprise the audience. You think you got me cornered? Sorry, but the show ends here. What? Hey you, Wada, was it? I'd like you to ask I'd like to ask you something. Are you saying you stood watch on the 51st floor the entire time without any breaks? Well, I reckon of course. There ain't no mistakes in my testimony. Really now? But didn't the sound of Mr. Edgeworth's assistant falling into the storeroom cause you to faint? I didn't mention it before, but after that I might have dozed off for a little. To be more precise, I fainted? Well, something like that. So something did happen. Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was likely the sound of Kay falling on in onto the storeroom floor. What's your point? Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Look at her, Mr. Edgeworth. That's the kind of person you're relying on. Kay fell onto into the storeroom after the body double had left the roof. In that case... <laughs> I have a theory on how things happen. After that cowardly body double fired a shot at me, he went and hid in the shadows until Kay fell into the storeroom. What? So, so what if he was hiding? Good grief. You guys still haven't noticed. What if the body double stayed hidden until Lotta had fainted? And then he went down to the 51st floor. <laughs> Can't be. Precisely. The locked room mystery on the roof has been unlocked. <laughs> oh! He even said it in my voice. 
away. There's more. I told the hidden body that all about John Marsh. That's why he attacked John the next day during practice, but got himself killed instead. In other words, the one who murdered the body double was none other than John. John had no motive to kill the body double. He knew. He knew it was the real president's son. Hmm. And how would he have known that? Because I told him so. In a letter. What did you say? That is a lie. Yep, it's all a lie. Huh? Then again, maybe not. Maybe I really did tell him. Right, John? It's true that I caused Lucilla's head to fall. But I didn't know any... I didn't know about my dad until today. I'm not lying. Oh, really? I wonder about that. I found out about the head falling thanks to the bug. Now, if you were the one who caused it to fall, and the body double was crushed to death. <laughs> that settles it. You are the culprit. You have successfully carried out your revenge. Congratulations! All the pieces of the puzzle are now in place, as Mr. Edgeworth would say. Logic fits. Now then. And rebuttals. This fucking piece of bitch. Piece of bitch, yes. <laughs> this fucking... <laughs> That's a new one. Okay. Okay, actually, this is this is the final testimony. But it's it's, it's, it's I don't know. There's a lot happening. Hmm. Huh. Manipulating humans into fighting fighting with each other. Sounds just like me, right? I did the same thing to Nightly and Blaze. At any rate, there is no way the body double could have gone for a ride in my balloon. The double was crushed by the monster's head, right? And who was it that caused the monster's head to fall? Do you understand now who the body double's real killer is? The truth that I provided them with gave them a big motive for murder. Get it? Those two try to kill each other because... Because of the truth you're so fond of. Oh my god, this fucking... This case, man. It's insanity. Didn't I say it was insanity? It's insanity, but it's even more insanity than I expected. And I've played this before. <laughs> I should have called this character gaslighting. <laughs> His name should have been Gaston Light. <laughs> Gaslight. <laughs> oh my god. I was just gonna suggest that, <laughs> really? Gaslight! That's even better! Oh my god! But, but that light is a bit too obvious. It has to be like L-Y-T-E or something. Get it? Those two try to kill each other because of the truth you're so fond of. Impossible. Hey, you detectives over there. Hurry up and arrest this murderer. What kind of fucking name is Guslite? What's wrong? Why aren't you moving? Uh, damn. <laughs> I thought so. Just admit it. In the end, aren't you all the same as Blaze and the body double? You ignore the prime suspect and come after me without any evidence. How easily it can be distorted to best suit your needs, this law you believe in. That is by no means true. If you're not gonna arrest anyone, maybe I should have a talk with the policeman outside. If I tell them that John Marsh is the killer, they'll be forced to take action. 
Simon Keys. <sighs> Your testimony isn't over yet. <laughs> really? I figured you'd try to stop me, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any evidence, do you? Which means there's no chance for you to win, right? But if you still plan to stop me, you should be prepared to take on this much risk. Uh, th that much? It's only natural, after all. The fate is of the net na the fate of the true culprit, John Marsh, is at stake here. Bengi, you freak. <laughs> hey, Miles. Why don't you take a nice deep breath? M Mr. Shields. At times like this, you should take a breather and think back. Defense attorneys always remain calm in a pinch and smile in the face of danger. The point of contention between your logic and his claims lies in the body double's escape route. How's about... For example, when you think of it like this, what's important isn't whether or not the body double got on the balloon, but rather, if we were to assume he did, what circumstances would have allowed for that? Turn my thinking around. Well, all I'm doing is a cheap imitation of your own man. Did it help? Circumstances that would have allowed the body double to get on the balloon. That's right. The body double not only had a large build, but he also had a gun. And in spite of that, no traces of sleeping drugs were found in his system. Which means... He can't be. Mr. Edgeworth, are you ready yet? Hope you haven't forgotten about this. <laughs> this is bad. I must break his testimony somehow. It's cool, I got it. Fourth, the double was crushed by the monster's head, yeah. And, uh, lion balloon. John was not the one who killed the body double. He was crushed by a monster. <laughs> Quit clowning around! This isn't like you at all! Oh, I get it! Since John is supposed to understand the heart of a monster, the one who understands the heart of a monsters is you. Not even I have monsters for friends, you know? Objection. Hmm. Stop being so modest. Didn't you have one very important friend? A monster you control at will. Simon Keys! You were the one who killed the body double. Th th that that's Lion Balloon. A monster made of cloth that expands when filled with hot air. It suits you quite well, wouldn't you agree? Sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about. You have been fixated on your claim that you manipulated John and the body double. Probably because it's an impossible fantasy of yours. After all, even an animal tamer cannot tame the dead. The body double had already been murdered while he was on the roof. And the murder weapon was the balloon you were in. Mm -mm. See, although it floats in the air, the balloon still weighs several hundred pounds. When the double threatened you on the rooftop, you immediately came up with a plan to defend yourself. And that plan was to crush him with your balloon. Whether the body double wanted to get on or that he was carrying a gun, none of that matters. Because what you carried in your balloon was the body double's corpse. Objection. Hold on a second, Mr. Edgeworth. You're saying the double was killed on the rooftop two nights ago. Well, that simply doesn't match up with the time of death. What did you say? That's not like you at all, Mr. Edgeworth. Take a good look at the autopsy report. The time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. <laughs> last night? That's right, the very night the, that Musilla's head fell. Well, Johnny boy, come on! How about telling us the truth? You killed your father, right? I know the feeling. You hated him, didn't you? Your father who left you all alone forever? 
you're wrong. I had no idea that guy was my dad. Not this again. Didn't I personally tell you myself? <laughs> is my logic wrong? Mr. Edgeworth, allow me to, allow to thank you once again for chasing down Blaze and Patricia and bringing them both to ruin. My revenge was a success, all thanks to your logic. If only the time of death matched up, then my logic would fit. Perhaps you did something to throw off the time of death. And what's more, dating Gustavia, was it? <laughs> the Prometheus school of running away from things. <laughs> he even took down the culprit of the IS-7 incident. Dating Gustavia and the IS-7 incident. That's it. Gustavia killed Dover and hid his body in a block of ice. Mr. Gustavia intended to freeze the body in order to throw the time of death. If the time of death had co coincided with the tea party, Mr. Gustavia would have been suspected. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> it's a shame that I didn't get to witness his destruction. How can you say that? Wasn't Mr. Gustavia your father, Simon? I'm scared. I'm so scared. Miss Rowland keeps asking me about that day. Daddy, help me. Why won't you come save me? Is it because I broke my promise with you and didn't eat your sweets? I couldn't care less. My father left me all alone. Even if we share the same blood, a man is not my father. Hate to say it, but like father, like son, you're the spitting image of him, Simon. You mean a clown? Yeah. <laughs> the father you hated so much. Huh? What are you talking about? You must have been fate. By sheer coincidence, you just happened to use the exact same method your father did. To throw off the victim's time of death. We rescued him from the refrigerated warehouse near the harbor pal refrigerated warehouse saying that I threw off the time of death how would I have done that the answer lies in where you hid the double's body this was the place you used to hide the body the whorehouse <laughs> throwing off the time of death by freezing the body along with John's kidnapping it seems that everything is coming together. The kidnapping. Why are we going back to that? I don't know a thing about it. Because <laughs> the refrigerated warehouse. I said warehouse, but I mean I'm 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 continuing with the same joke, so <laughs> might as well. Don't forget, John was confined in a refrigerated warehouse. That's right. You kept the body doubles corpse in that very same warehouse. Eighteen years ago, your father did a d hid a body in the same way. What? My father? The one who abandoned me? Did the same thing? Who would have guessed that both father and son would use the same method? Stop it! Don't lump me in with that guy. My father. I'm nothing like him. I'm not. There's not a single connection between us. Objection. You may think so, but even now, your bond with Mr. Gustavia still remains. Didn't you say once before, I don't like sweets? That may have come from the shock of losing your father. Don't you think? <laughs> you guys have no idea what you're saying. Even if you deny your father, aren't you aren't your thoughts and actions the same? Particularly your belief of sacrificing others to protect yourself. And finally, your crimes were brought to light, just as his were. Okay, sweet. We got him now. Or not. Just kidding! <laughs> I don't know anything about that warehouse. I had nothing to do with the kidnapping, after all. 
In order to threaten Judge Courtney, it's clear that you partook in the kidnapping. Objection. How scary! Those who get involved with you will be charged with all sorts of crimes. Fake up confession. In the end, there is no evidence for the instigation and for the kidnapping. None at all. Or what? Are you gonna forge some evidence? Just like Blaze and the rest? <laughs> I'll do nothing of the sort. I can't let him provoke me. You always say. Pursue the truth, no matter what, right? <laughs> Don't you mean only the truth that's most convenient to you? After all, that's how the police pull the wool over the eyes of those without power. And that's why my revenge was necessary. <laughs> None of you can catch me. Not Patricia, not Blaze, and not even you. Mr. Redgeworth! At this rate, isn't there something, anything we can do? Even though all my logic points to this man, I just need evidence. Even a single piece of evidence would suffice. Well, it's been a fun show, but it looks like it's time for the curtains to close. If you'd like, why don't you come and see my next performance? I'll let you, if you admit defeat. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Who was that? Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Redgeworth. Come here, where'd you go? I was just doing the job that I'm able to do, pal. Detective Gumshoe. Your report, please. I did a quick investigation, sir, about the warehouse John was at. A refrigerated warehouse is currently being rented by... The Very Big Circus, just as Mr. Edgeworth said. <laughs> so it's finally here. Our trump card. Well done, Detective Gumshoe. Now then, Mr. Keys. Hmm. There must be some mistake. Maybe it has something to do with the circus. I see, indeed. We are not well informed with the affairs of the circus. If that... In that case, why don't we get your boss's opinion on this? <laughs> Just walk around wearing dash cams on their person. <laughs> Regina. <laughs> we are renting a refrigerated warehouse to store the animal's food, but... I don't know much about the place. After all, I let Simon handle everything. <laughs> Curse you! <laughs> Scary. What a shame. It seems your desperate actions after the crime were in vain. If the body was found in the warehouse, suspicion would have fallen on you, the one in charge. That's why you specifically moved the body back to the Grand Tower, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. However, us finding John conf confined at the warehouse was a fatal mistake on your part. Our resident great thief and detective are both rather exemplary. What's wrong? I can even tell through your face paint that you're looking pale. <laughs> it's not over yet, Mr. Edgeworth. Your logic is missing the most important piece of evidence. Oh, please do tell. Isn't it obvious? Evidence that I killed the body double with a balloon. You can't present it, can you? After all, there's no such evidence. There's no way such evidence could possibly exist. The evidence. It exists. What do you say? If Mr. Keyes murdered the victim, traces of the murder should still remain here. On the balloon. Yes, yes, yes! Fucking get him! It should become clear once we examine the basket of this balloon. <laughs> the balloon again? Didn't you already find the bullet hole? There's no way you'll find anything else there. That's... It, 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 it'll be fine! Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, is, uh, Mr. Edgeworth is a hero who always finds the truth no matter what he is up against. That's right, pal. Of course it's gonna be fine. Mr. Edgeworth has gotten out of more impossible situations than I can count. Miles, I believe in you too. But more importantly, I'm sure your old man watching over you believes in you as well.
Miles Edgeworth, calm down and think. You're just one step away from the perfect proof. The body double was killed by this balloon. The proof lies in the traces left on the basket. Simon Keys, it's time for you to atone for your crimes. I see it with my own eyes. The moment this past case is settled once and for all. Please, Prosecutor Edgeworth, deliver the final blow to, the, to this unforgivable person. This is the final piece of evidence that proves your crimes. What traces were left on the balloon that crushed the victim? John found the body. A bouquet of lion lilies was there as well. Lion lilies, the flowers from Zhang Fa that represent the bond between parent and child. That's your Surely they must be buried under a mountain of garbage by now. Moreover, the one who threw it away was John himself. That's not much of a bond now, is it? The language of flower stuff has nothing to do with this. Calm down, John. Certainly, you may have thrown the flowers away. However, I believe those emotions remain as strong as ever. Those bonds will surely protect you from that man in the form of my final piece of evidence. What the heck are you talking about? Those flowers were crushed. Ergo, they must have come into contact with the murder weapon. Perhaps we'll find the very same pollen still stuck to the basket of your balloon. No way, no way, no way! You guys examined the basket just a few moments ago! If there had been any yellow pollen stuck on there, wouldn't you have noticed it then? Mr. Keys, evidence is not restricted to what you can see with the naked eye. What? Emma! Yes! Would you perform one more scientific investigation for us? Leave it to me. The balloon's basket, right? Ah! A reaction! No, there was no blood. But there was no blood. This is clearly pollen from a yellow flower. We'll find out soon enough whether or not it's from the same flower. What? I mean... Just because it was crushed doesn't mean that there has to be blood. It just means that, like, his chest must have been crushed. So that, like, his lungs would deflate or something. I don't fucking know exactly how it works. But there doesn't necessarily have to be blood. At least I don't think so. I may be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I'd say this proves that. The body double's death was caused directly by your own hand. No way, that's... Can't be, I... You crushed the body double to death on the roof of the tower. Then you retrieved the body and hid it in the warehouse. Why? You have to go to the trouble of retrieving the body. Two nights ago, he knew that a separate incident would occur at the, at the tower. Oh, Miss Cranes! Precisely. Leaving the body there would have disrupted his plans. I see. But even so, he couldn't leave the body in the circus warehouse either. Exactly. So the next day, when he was bringing the body back to the tower once again, he saw the small fire John started which caused the Musilla's head to fall. Was that when the idea came to you? Your plan to pin the crime on John? <laughs> You made it look like the murder weapon was the fallen head. Such foul, cowardly behavior. For that reason, you carried the double's body in the balloon and lowered it into the film lot. At that time, the figure of the body double being lowered down by a rope was captured in John's video recording. D damn, it was all... Saw through it all? Damn it! Damn you! 
you manipulated animals, you manipulated people, and you manipulated cases. Almost as if you were a king. However, it's now all come to an end. Simon, the animals have gotten angry. Even money and mystique. You never thought of them as your friends at all. How sad. Uh, damn it! Don't you look at me with those eyes! Hm. It's about time you went back to being a mere clown. A fitting end to your pitiful jester's act. Oh, stay away! Get away from me! Stop it! Please stop it! Daddy, help me! I'm scared! I'm so scared! I don't know anything! I didn't do anything bad! They were the bad ones, weren't they? Horace, why? Why did you stop me? If you hadn't done that, I... I couldn't even trust the police! Nobody would help me! That man, back then, he saved me. The only one who helped me was Dogen. So I used everyone else. What's wrong with that? Stop it! Don't come any closer! Stop! Oh, yeah, we only did it! Oh my god. Seems the game is finally over. Ah. Shelly the Killer. Mr. Edgeworth, I must thank you. You have exposed the true identity of the Mastermind. Now, I am free to... What? Drawing a gun would be most inadvisable. Stay where you are and do not move. <laughs> I don't have a gun. You do have a gun, do you not? You intend to draw it and fire it without anyone noticing. You must have taken it from the body double when he, ch when he killed him. This man has betrayed his bond of trust with me. He would have me kill the president while knowing full well he was the body double. Lying about a target is an extremely dangerous thing to do to an assassin. Not having all the cards on the table can seriously jeopardize an, 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 an assassination. Uh, however, what is even more unforgivable is your deception and your attempt to manipulate me. The time has come for your retribution. Stop! Y you are. It has been far too long, Shelley. Please step aside. That man is my prey. I must ask you to spare his life. Please permit this young acolyte to receive his proper punishment in prison. <laughs> ass versus ass! And if I refuse? This is the first life I have saved. I will not allow it to be taken away so easily. You saved a life. The assassin, Sir Han Dogen. <laughs> Ironic, is it not? That I, the one who has taken countless lives, am making a plea for this young one's life. He saved my life, just as I have saved his, before I knew it. I grew quite fond of the lad. You may laugh at me as much as you wish. However, I must ask that you spare the life of the boy. From one assassin to another, please make this allowance. I understand, if you are willing to go that far. You have my thanks. I am in your debt. No need for thanks. I simply felt there would be no merit in a fight to the death with you. That is all. And with that, I must take my leave. Damn it! Wait! Prosecutor Edgeworth, I must thank you as well. It was necessary for this young acolyte to be put in his place. And that you have done. 
Now then, it's time for me to return to my humble cage, surrounded by iron bars. Right, Anubis? Right, boy? Oh, look who's here. Hey, priest guy, you killed my dad, right? Indeed, I am not one to forget those I have slain. I'm gonna poor Shelly. <laughs> okay, but it, it's true though, it's true. I see. You must despise me, boy with horns. In that case... <laughs> John! Do not panic. I simply lent the boy with horns my knife. Take that knife and run it through my throat. A single stab should do it. This still just fucking keeps going! <laughs> I've long grown weary of my wooden carvings. <laughs> Revenge. D John! Don't do it! John! Please! I beg of you! Until just now, I had intended to seek revenge. No matter how many years it took. Revenge? Revenge is good. Really, really good. All your pain and suffering slips away, everything becomes numb, and you'll feel nothing. Yeah, you may be right. I thought about that while I listened to what you had to say. John. The only one who would be satisfied with revenge would be myself, right? If I became a murderer, my mom would go through even more pain and suffering. My friends from the movie, too, and all those people who care about me as well. We love a woke 13-year-old, like, truly. Like, yes. <laughs> a boy with horns. Says some interesting things. That's right. I finally get it now. I'll never forgive you, but... I'm not the one who should punish you. After all, isn't that what my mom... And that prosecutor guy are here for? John. John! You just said some really profound stuff just now. Okay, perhaps you should study up a little more yourself. Is that so? Well then, young one. It is time for us to depart. Where to? To prison, of course. That place will be our home. Home? And with that, the case that involved and affected so many people came to a close. However, there was still one last thing I had to do. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry to keep you waiting! Why don't you call Uncle Ray and the rest of us out here? Mr. Edgeworth, the formal proceedings have just come to a close. Hmm? What are you talking about? This is the place where I once relinquished my prosecutor's badge. This is your prosecutor's badge. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what is the meaning of this? Consider this my resignation. I am no longer a prosecutor. In order to save me when I was suffering from memory loss, you- A certain man once said. The only ally a defendant has is their attorney. By trusting in their client, an attorney draws closer to the truth. The sight of that man still shines brilliantly in my eyes. Just as the image of my father fighting in court does. Gregory. However, this is nothing more than that man and my father's way of life. It is not mine. Mr. Edgeworth! 
I think I shall live as a prosecutor after all. I see. So you've made your decision. I'm sorry. Oh no, I understand. That's your answer, isn't it? It is. Okay, and that's the end of this conversation. Don't regret it, even if you beg me later. I won't let you work for me ever again. He really said that... The image of that man shines brightly in his eyes. But like, I can't, I can't take this translation for their word, you know, because it's fan translated. I would need to like look at like the, the Japanese version and like translate that myself. <laughs> the man is absolutely Phoenix because he, um, he compared him with his own father. Don't regret it, even if you beg me later. I won't let you work for me ever again. I... I understand. You know, Miles. Mind if I ask you why you chose to live as a prosecutor? Mr. Shields, you asked me this before. To fight crimes as, crime as a prosecutor, or to save people as a defense attorney. I want you to think carefully about how you want to live your life from now on. I've thought long and hard about that question ever since. How should I live my life? And after this case concluded, I finally found my answer. I want to save people as a prosecutor. As a prosecutor? Simon Keyes. He too was a victim. He lost a parent in a past murder, and with it, the ability to believe in anything else. I, too, know that feeling. The feeling of losing what's important to you, and being unable to believe in anything. I doubted everything during my lonely battles in those days. And what I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. The one who saved me was... Mr. Keyes must have been all alone. Unable to find salvation from the law, he had no choice but to turn his hand to revenge. And I suppose you never thought to seek help from the police. No way, no way! As long as Blaze was around, any evidence would be destroyed by him. Actually, didn't something like that almost happen today during Patricia's trial? I want to save those like Simon Keyes. So how would you save him? I'm sure this tragedy could have been avoided if only he could have relied on the courts. But instead, he was cornered by Blaze the Best who used the power of law for evil. The form of the law can change depending on who wields it. It can be at once a shield to protect and a blame blade to harm. And that too is a contradiction of the law. A contradiction, huh? That's true. It sure is a contradiction in the law. The way the law is right now, it isn't always completely right. The only way to right those contradictions is by joining in the court system. The one who could have saved Simon Keys was not an attorney, but rather a watchman of the law. A prosecutor. I shall face the contradictions in the law as a prosecutor. I see. That's just like you. But you know, it'll be tough. It won't be just to walk on, walk in the park. You'll be going up against the law itself. You do realize that, right? I do. However, someone must. Yup, yup. Uncle Ray believes in you too. The law evolves and grows, just like all of us do. I'm sure you can pull it off. After all, you're Gregory's son. Your old man would never give up, no matter what. His eyes always saw only what laid straight ahead. Miles, when you choose, chose to live as a prosecutor, your eyes looked just like your father's. It looks like you've grown up a bit. I really wish your old man could see you now. Thank you very much, Mr. Shields. 
So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, allow me to formally return this to you. Please do. I, Justine Courtney, as a member of the PIC, do hereby return to Miles Edgeworth the rights and privileges of a prosecutor in the names of the goddess of law. It's back. And with that, Prosecutor Edgeworth is revived. I should have removed that for the part of the game that I didn't have it. You know what, whatever. <laughs> That's great, sir. So then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, it's time for Uncle Ray to make his exit. I have to report to your old man about the, about the traitor in the Edgeworth family. Thank you for everything, truly. The next time we meet just might be in the courtroom. I hope you'll be ready. Uncle Ray might not look it, but he's an ace attorney after all. I look forward to seeing the attorney my father trained in action. Take care. Prosecutor Edgeworth, welcome back. Judge Courtney, I must give my thanks to you as well. To me? You sought to fix the corruption within the PIC from the inside. That must truly have been a lonely battle. No, it was not. I was never alone. Because the goddess of law is always by your side, right? You made me realize that one could fight in such a way. The prosecutor's office, no. The entire legal world is caught up in this contradiction. If that cannot be set right, there is a truth that will never see the light of day. It was only through your help that I was able to find this new path. One that fights against the contradictions in the law. I too find that promising. As one in the service of the goddess of law, you shall certainly succeed in helping the law grow. Let us meet again in the courtroom. Yes. I must apologize for my shameful acts during the trial two days ago. Next time, I shall fulfill my duties as a judge perfectly. Your Honor, I do not intend to speak regarding your ideals. Prosecutor Edgeworth? However, the greatest judge I know is one overflowing with humanity. Even during a trial, that judge experiences happiness, anger, sadness, and joy. But nevertheless, always hands down the correct verdict in the end. It's difficult to say, but sometimes I feel that perfection is not always correct. So a judge, too, has the right to behave in such a manner. Thank you very much. Prosecutor Edgeworth, when I pursued and fought against Blaze the Best, the goddess of law was not the only one by my side. Ha! Ah, it's John! When I have this cut out with me, I feel a strange sense of courage well up from, from, within, from within. No matter how painful things became, no matter how strong the foe, when I remember that, that, when I remember that I am not alone, I am able to keep moving forward. Wrongs must be put right. For John's sake as well. John too lost his father in the past crime. That is more important to me than even the words of the goddess of law. <laughs> Though I'm sure the goddess would be angered by those words. <laughs> your bond with your son is the secret to your strength, I imagine. I don't have to be perfect. I just want to grow little by little. Both as a judge and as a mother. That is how I feel. It seems there is much each of us has yet to learn. Agreed. We are still but children before the world. Let us grow in our respective paths. Until we meet again. I shall look forward to that reunion. May the blessings of the goddess of law be upon you as you follow your new path. Though I once lost my position as prosecutor, I have now reclaimed it, so that I may tread a new path as a prosecutor. I shall surely reach the truth waiting at the end of this path, no matter how difficult the path may be. 
If any seek to stop me on my path, they shall receive no mercy. No matter who they may be, I will shove just one word. Yes! That's it! That's it, boys! We did it! We did it! We did it! Woo! Chief! What sort of scoop are you aiming for next? Hey! Ain't you a journalist? There ain't nothing more important than information. You may be my apprentice, apprentice, but you're still my business rival. I ain't gonna tell you everything. Th that's my mentor, all right. I reckon you're even more prepared than me. I understand. I'll get my information with my own two feet. Yeah, that's the spirit. By the way, would you mind me asking what sort of scoop you're aiming for next? Huh, Ch Chief? <laughs> ain't no need to be stingy. I'm your mentor, after all. That's just heinous. I know, right? It seems that the wound on my left arm has yet to heal. The bodyguard who inflicted this wound upon me this is a name I will never forget. Now then, shall I return to being a simple ice cream salesman? Perhaps this time I should try being a crepe salesman instead. For now, I shall live a calm life until my service uh, services are required once more. Don't think too too hard about this. <laughs> Might have been knocked out once by that prosecutor named Edgeworth. Now keep on trying to escape. I won't let him dampen my fighting spirit. Ain't that right, Rocky? The gong that'll sound off my next escape will ring out soon enough. Until then, let's keep working out. Oh my god. Are you inquiring into my studies to become a pet groomer? I am working as hard as ever. I spend every day covered in mud. Perhaps this suits my true nature far better than life as a newspaper salesman. Once I leave the prison, I hope to earn an honest wage as a pet trimmer. Huh? My sentence has been extended because I was Warden Roland's accomplice. Why do you think I've been giving a rat's ass about being in stupid animals? <laughs> he really said rat's ass. Love that for him. Yes, that was supposed to be the joke with that. <laughs> Gina was really shocked by the truth about Simon too. I mean, I trusted him as my subordinate. But there's no use fretting over it. The show must go on. <clears throat> I have to do my best so that I won't lose to the magic or ventriloquist divisions. I'll put on the greatest performance ever. One that'll blow away this entire case. Good for you, Regina. You do that, Regina. It seems I have grown soft in my old age. Right, Anubis? Right, my boy? To think the life I saved on a whim 18 years ago would drive me to such lengths. Thanks to that, I am confined to my humble cell once more. Well, this time that child is here as well. Perhaps it won't be such a bore, right, boy? Oh, boy. Today's dessert is chocolate cake. That gently melting moment of allure. <laughs> I will wait for you forever, cakes. I shall come here every day, just as you and Raymond did for me. Monsieur Shields, Prosecutor Edgeworth, I am truly grateful to them. 
I cannot believe I am able to eat your desserts once more, Monsieur Master. Oh, I have been allowed to distribute my treats in both the detention center and the prison. For the past 18 years, I have brought joy to one and all with my delicious sweets. Hmm. Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> yes, see! Thanks for everything, boys! Of course, I owe Greggy my thanks too! After all, I get to stuff myself with Jeffy's delicious desserts once again. Oi, next time, maybe I'll use one of Jeffy's sweets to create a new drug. The tucking diet. You're tucking your stomach while you tuck into desserts. It'll be delicious and slimming, and also good for your health. Man, I'm glad I got to meet and sketch so many beauties. But Mandy caught a glimpse of my beauty sketch. She had a misunderstanding and clobbered me in the face with my sketchbook. So in exchange for my sketch of beauties, I had one beauty walk out on me. Maybe it's time for me to start getting more serious about my life. Do I take the path of an artist or do I follow the path of my heart? Oh, and by heart, I mean the heart of my new lady. Of course. Of course you do. Well, he moves on quick, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Bat. Thanks for all your help today. Hm. I'll testify about the IS-7 incident as much as you need me to. Prosecutor Edgeworth seems pretty active, too. He chose not to take the same path as Gregory, but rather to live as a prosecutor. And I'm kind of sad that I won't get to work with him, but I'll continue to watch over him. Heh. <laughs> Looks like you've grown up quite a bit yourself. <laughs> I'm so happy Mr. Bat actually praised me. And if you ever need a hand from Attorney Raymond Shields, give me a call anytime, any place. <laughs> Larry should date a statue. were punished, punished far more leniently than I expected, once it was proven that I had been threatened. Ouch! No crime is more heavy yet or light than any other. I, I'm sorry, of course I regret what I did. However, I'm so glad I can still be together with you, Granny. Huh? You want to hurry back to work? That's right! The next corpse is waiting for us after all. Huge thanks to the translators because they did a wonderful job, truly. I'm glad that my scientific investigation came in handy this time around as well. Good thing I rushed back here all the way from Europe. And now I have to leave again. It kind of takes the fire out of a girl, as you can imagine. <laughs> but this is all so that I can become an actual forensic scientist. So then, I guess it's time to go. Uh, if anything comes up, be sure to call me right away. The second I get the word, I'll dash right over. The greater the father, the greater the expectations are for their children. Prosecutor the best, was it? His way of life shall be tested henceforth. Just as mine was. Miles Edgeworth chose to live a different life from his father, as a prosecutor. I suppose that too is an answer. Look at all the people that worked on this. I could never have imagined the truth that my own man was hiding. 
Unlike me, who only thought about the Lung Clan. My old man was trying to protect an entire nation. But I swear to you all, that I will carry on his will. Even if the president was a fake, and the real one was murdered. I swear that I, together with my men, shall revive Zheng Fa. Someday, I will surely show you all a Zheng Fa bring brimming with life. Oh my god, are you kidding me? They actually... I've asked everyone to stop calling me the best. Yes. Don't like it. It makes me feel like I'm just borrowing Pop's power. Long for president. I shall study even harder than before and triumph over Pop's. I become strong enough so that I won't lose even to Miss Redworth. Now then, let's start by thinking up my new nickname. A lot has happened, but thankfully the film was a roaring success. The gossip articles about the murder made that movie the talk of the country. A monstrous man appears from the mighty Mozilla. This is the true face of the monster who murdered the president of Zheng Fa. Huh? Isn't that you in the photo, Mr. Powers? Huh? How could something like this happen? Now, now, it's fine, isn't it? It's thanks to those articles that our film is a big hit. Huh. Much obliged. What <laughs> precious boy is a nickname? You know, I don't think that would work very well as a prosecutor. Prosecutor nickname. John, I greatly enjoyed watching your movie. It's no big deal. It's not like I had a major role or anything. What are you saying? You play the key character who connects Musilla and Gordy. There is no one else besides you who could have played the part. Yeah, I guess. Well, it would be nice if there was a sequel. I really enjoy working as an actor. Mom, before we head home, can we go buy something? I'd like to decorate our home with a lion lily for Dad. Then one will not suffice. You will need two more, one for me and one for Amy. Why is it the day after my birthday? They couldn't have like something happening on my birthday. I am upset. <laughs> Anyways. God, I almost cried. <laughs> wow, you were really busy with all those cases, weren't we, sir? Indeed, we were. Why did all these incidents happen in such quick su succession? I feel like things are always busy whenever I'm around. Wait. Okay, wouldn't that mean you're a magnet for crimes? Hey, Gummy! I was rude! I do get the impression that he's not entirely wrong. So then, Kay, do you intend to resume your training to become a great thief? Hmm, I don't know. Huh? Is something on your mind, pal? How should I put it? Until now, I've always been chasing after my father. So that I could become a great thief, just like him. Like the previous Yatagarasu, I suppose. But watching you, Mr. Edgeworth, made me think. Maybe, instead of chasing after my father, I should find my own path. I mean, you didn't become a defense attorney either. Chasing after a parent's shadow isn't the only path in life for a child, after all. I'm going to aim to be a hero in my own way. That sounds good. But of course, that doesn't mean I'm gonna throw away the name of the great thief Yatakarasu. No matter what sort of hero you'll become, K will always still be K. Thanks, Gummy. And Gummy will always be Gummy. Of course, pal. I plan to keep pushing forward on my path of a detective after all. Mr. Edgeworth, I look forward to continuing to work with you, sir. Yes, I'll be counting on you, Detective Gumshoe. Detective, you saved me many times during these past cases. You have my gratitude. I suggest you look forward to your next salary assessment. Huh? What? Is 
that mean? What do you think it means? What's wrong? I am saying that your salary ought to be raised. Really, sir? I can't believe it. It happened, boys! Isn't that great, Gummy? It's like a dream come true. I can finally say goodbye to my instant noodle lifestyle. However, that doesn't mean you can start slacking off. The real work begins from here on out. You should prepare yourself. Yes, sir. Roger that. I'll devote my body and soul to following after you, Miss Regworth. The path Mr. Shields and Judge Courtney taught me is to take a stand against the contradictions in the law and to reach, reach the truth at the end of, the, of that road. What am I able to do? That is the question I must continue to dwell upon. Certainly, this path will not be easy. However... Prosecutor Edgeworth, when I pursued and fought against Blaze the Best, the goddess of law was not the only one by my side. It's John! When I have this cutout with me, I feel a strange sense of courage well up from within. When I remember that I am not alone, I am able to keep moving forward. <laughs> your bond with your son is the secret to your strength, I imagine. Bonds, huh? I completely forgot! That was sudden, what's wrong? I was searching for members for the new Yatakarasu team. Now that you mention it, I do remember you saying something to that effect. But in the end, I wasn't even able to find a single person. Can you imagine it? A team, combining their powers in order to steal the truth. I wanted to create an invincible team like that, but... What are you saying, pal? Don't you already have a team? Together, the three of us can solve any crime, all, any case that comes our way. Yeah, you're right. A prosecutor, a detective, and a great thief. We're the invincible trio of heroes that steals, captures, and pursues the truth. Hearing all that kind of makes me feel sorry for the truth. As long as the three of us are together, there is nothing to fear. Isn't that right, Miss Rashworth? Yes, you are correct. Even until his last moments, my father ran along his own path. I too shall advance along mine. Accompanied by my somewhat boisterous comrades. As long as they are by my side, I can walk forward without hesitation. On this new path as a prosecutor. Prosecutors and attorneys. The path I walk is not my father's. However, I am certain that the two paths are not separate. Though we may walk in opposite directions, our destination is the same. Why you may ask? Because both paths lead to the one and only truth. God. We did it. We We did it. <laughs> and now I will be fixing some things real quick.